fucking doors open, let's go. Nothing makes a gamer more hyped than to complete a challenge they have sunk hours, days, or even years on. Oh my god! We did it! We did it! Oh my god! We did it! No way! Oh my god! Finally getting that world's first, first place on speedrun.com, or beating an insane challenge, ain't nothing better. What's that? Dad! 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 But sometimes, things don't always go as planned. No, that's because of the ghost. Wait, it's because of the ghost. It's because it's because of shared fate, the res timer. If that didn't fucking count, I swear to God. No, 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 no. This is gonna be a fun video. As always, before we get going, we gotta talk about the rules I made this list around. I think we all know what a choke is. Someone, or a group of someones, attempts something and ultimately falls short. As far as the rankings go, I attempted to rank these by how they impacted the community and or how long the community tried to complete the respective challenge. And yes, this is just my opinion, but I do feel like this list is accurate. If there's a choke you think will come out on top, or if you think I missed one, please put in the comment section below. In any case, let's get stu- Oh, wait a second, I almost forgot. We have a co-host for this video. The OG Destiny historian, Mr. Eggman himself, Evan F. 1997. Evan, why don't you kick this list off? Number 10, Solo Caretaker on Titan and on console. If the Vow of the Disciple raid proved anything, it's that the Destiny community needs harder and more complicated encounters than ever before. Vow was arguably one of the most complex raids ever released at this point, and the community knew that Destiny Low Man Challengers would have their work cut out for them. Today, after nearly a year after the raid's release, all but the final boss have finally been soloed. But today, we're discussing the second encounter. I don't want to get too involved on the how of this challenge. Painter is a very detailed video explaining the solo up to here, but one guardian was on a run, a very good run. Enter Rented, going for world's first titan to solo caretaker on console. In this clip, you can see how close he got. One or maybe two linear shots more would have sealed the deal. Rented would eventually get this solo done, but this run was not a fun one to face. Number 9. Hard Mode Axis on a Warlock As challenges go, there are very few out there which have been torn apart as much as Axis has. Beating the Siva God will always mark you as an above average to great player, but for those who want to push themselves to new heights, attempting to beat Axis on Hard Mode will give you a challenge you'll never forget. But for one Guardian, it wasn't enough. All Axis Hard Mode challenges are done on Titan. Between the movement, damage options, debuff options, Titans are just superior. But for Dom Legends, he wanted to kill Axis on hard mode with a Warlock. And he nearly did. For those of you who don't know, Dom Legends is probably the best Axis challenger in Destiny, completing more wacky challenges than anyone. As you can see in this clip, Dom had gotten Axis to one shot, but in the heat of the moment, he failed to see he had one rocket left. And as we watch him fruitlessly shoot Axis with his primary, that one rocket is what separated a gamer and Axis history. Maybe next time, Dom. Number 8, Sub-7 Crota. Six-man Crota has been one of the most optimized raid speedruns ever. With its short length and relatively simple mechanics, speed is all that separates the top Crota players. But sometimes, going too fast can lead to horrible mistakes. For Clan Felwinter, Taking post Age of Triumph Crota below 7 minutes was a must. The current world record, at the time, 
was seven minutes and nine seconds. All they needed to do was to squeeze a little bit cleaner movement in and it was theirs. Finally, the run was happening. Not only were they on sub seven pace, they were on 645 pace. This was it, the run to end all Crota runs until they got to Irgut. When one of the guardians got stuck while trying to breach through one of the glass walls. This honestly wasn't that big of a problem. He could just leave and they could five man Crota and that would work just fine. So that's what he did. He went to orbit. Only problem is that there is a glitch where if you are streaming on Xbox and someone leaves, there is a chance you'll pull more players to orbit with you. And this happened and the sub seven was lost. The next day, the record was lowered to seven minutes and four seconds, but with most of that team disbanding and not many other teams going for the Crota record, Age of Triumph Crota may never see a sub seven time. Number seven, Solo Descent. Deepstone Crypt was an interesting raid. Every encounter was nearly soloable. Security was an RNG nightmare. Atrax still is one of the hardest solo challenges in Destiny 2. And before it was patched, the final boss, Tanix, was also soloable. Granted, you needed so much cheese that even Crota would blush, but it was possible. Descent, the third encounter, was the one encounter that had the entire challenge community in a frenzy. It was so close to being soloable. There had to be a way. Glitching through walls, better ad control, better loadouts, the community was close, but something was missing. Granted, I'm speeding this up a lot, but Solo Descent was one of the greatest moments for Destiny Theory Crafting. If you'd like a short breakdown on how this insane challenge works, check out this video from Vote for Shifu explaining the strats. But just to keep things short, just know I ranked this challenge in the top 5 hardest challenges for a reason. On to our challenger, Stuart. I'm not gonna say anything, just watch this clip and you'll understand. A shank with a little too much aim assist kept this guardian from entering a very exclusive group of challengers. To make this choke even worse, Bungie has since patched the glitch used in this challenge. So it will never get another chance until maybe one day a new tech is found. Number six, Crown of Sorrows day one with math class. One of the oldest ongoing problems in Destiny is with our beloved math teacher, Datto. Datto has been a top tier raider all the way back from the very first raid, the OG Vault of Glass. And ever since, Datto and Math Class have always ranked high on the day one leaderboards. But one thing has always eluded them, a world's first belt. However, one day, history was almost made. The raid was Crown of Sorrows. Now, Crown is an interesting day one raid, and it's been regarded as one of the hardest day one experiences in Destiny. Needless to say, some tears were shed trying to grind this monster out. But Datto and Math Class were on a hot streak. Over five years since their first raid, and Math Class was in prime position to take worlds first. As Galron fell, everyone in the fire team got the raid exotic Teraba. For those who don't know, whenever a team got worlds first, they got the raid exotic. Naturally, everyone in the fire team, everyone in their chats, was losing their mind. So excited to finally get a world's first. But then Bungie released the news that Math Class wasn't world's first. They were second. Clan B Bold had crossed the line six minutes before Math Class did. And you may wonder why this happened. It's actually because they were in the exact same instance as B Bold, but behind a couple of damage phases. Now, no disrespect to be bold, they earned this win, but for math class, this may have been the biggest bait in Destiny history. And I have a full video on my channel about this. I'm not sure if you want to actually include that or not. It's up to you. Number five, Last Wish, Ninji's Team Day One. Needless to say, Forsaken was one of the biggest, most fun, and most important moments in Destiny. And Last Wish was definitely the biggest part of Forsaken. Between the sheer length, obscene leveling, and relentless enemies, Last Wish was one of, if not the most difficult challenges the community has ever been faced with. Very few teams got past the first few encounters, but the biggest gate was the fourth encounter, the Vault. 
all but a very few of the best teams even had a chance at beating it. Team Redeem, the team that would eventually beat this raid first, took nearly six hours here. But one team did beat this encounter in a timely manner. Ninji and his squad were in and out in about an hour and a half and were on to the final boss hours before anyone was even close. So yes, they had a huge chance at taking the worlds first. But for whatever reason, either by user error, mental strain, or just not finding that rhythm, Ninji and his team would stay here for hours, eventually being surpassed by multiple teams. And after a day's break, they would have to settle for 60th on the leaderboards. Number four, Leviathan and Clan Redeem. The start of Destiny 2 meant the start of a new story, new loot, new challenges, and new raids. And no one was more ready than Clan Redeem. Hot off their world's first of the most recent Destiny raid, they were ready to conquer this new beast, the Leviathan. Could two in a row be possible? I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and show this clip. When Kallus got to below a certain level of health, he does a new attack. This attack will vaporize anyone standing on the damage plates. Being on a run that this team was severely committed to, this one hit pretty hard. And not long after, World's First would be taken by the legend himself. Heartbreak, because a singular new mechanic was all that separated this team in raiding history. More World's First would come, but this one hurt a lot. Number three, Solo Atheon, Baxley. Solo Atheon is one of the most integral parts of Destiny, the OG raid challenge. Mr. Push Me Off The Map With Grenades himself. This challenge would define raid challenges forever. Every new iteration brought about new strategies, but no version of Atheon was more daunting than Destiny 2's debut. Hundreds of hours were put in between Destiny 2's top gamers. I don't want to go too in depth though. I have a whole video cataloging the entire challenge, which you can also go check out. But the choke I'm referring to is with Baxley. Now for the uninformed, Baxley is a legend in the Destiny community, doing challenges and setting records that have stood for years. After he and his team came up with the possible strats for soloing the Vex God, most people assumed he would get the first clear. And after hours of attempt, near misses, and a lot of tears, this happened. No! No! No, 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 no! No! No fucking way! This was the closest he would ever get. A short while after, Vote for Shifu would claim Worlds First, and Baxley would never get another shot at soloing a Vex God. Number 2. Hard Mode Wrath Redeem Wrath the Machine may be the best raid Bungie has ever made. The loot is great, the encounters are awesome, the aesthetics are amazing, the soloable challenges remain top tier to this day, and it had the fastest Destiny 1 Day 1 clear ever. Clan Redeem was on fire when Wrath was around. They dominated nearly every speedrun and challenge it could muster. So when Hard Mode Wrath was released, you can only imagine how pumped they were to get back into the world's first chair. And they were on pace to accomplish just that. Except, there was one bug Bungie hadn't patched. I'm gonna keep GR. I don't want to get, I don't want to get, like, beat. What? No way. Ow. Push too far forward. Oh, Are you kidding me? What? You're supposed to jump down here after this encounter, but if you don't give the game enough time to register that the Zamboni has been beaten before falling, the game assumes you fell into a death plane, and it just wipes you. This would kill their hopes at Worlds first, and they would eventually have to settle for third. Choking because you made a mistake is one thing, but choking because the game cheated you is a whole different level of pain. Which leads us to our number one spot. I'm shooting! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! Oh my God, I'm shooting! I'm shooting! Wait, I'm shooting! Please no! Please no! Wait, what? No, that's because the ghost. Wait, it's because the ghost. It's because it's because of shared fate, the res timer. If that didn't fucking count, I swear to God. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, well, here's a look at one of, if not one of the most painful moments in Destiny. As we stated earlier, 
Dado and math class had been on the hunt for a day one for going on four years at this point, and they had hung with the top teams going into the last encounter of the biggest raid Bungie has ever made. Yes, even through Vault. After the hours passed, Worlds First had come and gone, but one thing was clear. Nearly no one had finished this raid. It was monstrous at the time. Only two teams had beaten the raid so far. Maybe Math Class had a shot at being in the top three. So they grinded and grinded. Now I've heard multiple reasons as to why they didn't get the 24 hours. Some say it was internet connections, online trolls, or maybe just pure exhaustion. We may never know fully why Math Class finished the raid only mere moments after the 24 hour mark, but we can safely say this qualifies as the biggest choke in Destiny history. I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. Evan for joining me on this little history lesson. His links and socials are in the video description. If you like this style of Destiny history videos, make sure to hit up his channel. He has covered far more than I ever could. And if you like this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up so YouTube will bump this video up. Alright Guardians, have a great day. I'll see you next time.